Good evening, I'm Jack Fuji, and welcome to the eighth session of Agriculture 194Q, Focus on Agriculture. Focus on Agriculture is a one credit course offered by the College of Agriculture, Forestry and Natural Resource Management here at your University of Hawaii Hilo. And we come to you live every Thursday evening from 7 to 8.30 p.m. from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library here on the University of Hawaii at Hilo campus. This evening we're featuring the Akaka Falls Inn, so we hope that you don't change the channel and stay tuned to us. And uh, for those of you joining us for the first time, uh, the objective of this class is to inform you about the various aspects of diversified agriculture here in the state of Hawaii. And each semester we focus on a different subject area of diversified agriculture. And this semester we're focusing on international flavors and uh, emphasizing local agricultural produce. Before I go on, I'd just like to uh, have the Elmo and uh, let you know if you have any questions regarding the class or if you have any questions regarding the University of Hawaii at Hilo or your College of Agriculture, Forestry, and Natural Resource Management, please uh, write to me at uh, 200 West Kawili Street, Hilo, Hawaii, 96720-4091. And if you'd like to fax us, you can fax us at 974-7674 or call us at 974-7393. And also, uh, for those of you on the internet, you can call us or you can uh, contact me at jfuji at hawaii.edu. Since we are coming to you live this evening at approximately 8 p.m., those of you here in the classroom and, of course, those of you in the viewing audience can call us and ask questions of our guest uh, chefs this evening. And, of course, those of you here on the Big Island can call us direct, and those of you on the outer islands of Maui, Lanai, Molokai, uh, Oahu, and Kauai, you can call us collect. So uh, we hope to hear from you later on in the class. Again, uh, we are featuring the Akaka Falls uh, Inn, um, and uh, that's located in, uh, in Honomu here on the Big Island on the uh, uh, north uh, or on the Hamakua coast. And this evening, uh, my guests are Sonia Martinez. She's the owner of Akaka Falls Inn. Uh, she is a member of the prestigious uh, International Association of Culinary Professionals and uh, that's a, a big honor to be with that association. She has also owned uh, many cooking schools and had many gourmet shops since 1980, not only in South Carolina, but also in Miami, Florida. So she brings to us a wealth of uh, cooking information, so we hope that you'll enjoy. This evening, joining Sonia, we also have Georgia Bannon, and Georgia uh, will assist uh, Sonia this evening while they prepare the real fine dishes this evening. So at this time, it gives me great pleasure to turn the program over to Sonia and Georgia. So go ahead, uh, Sonia, take over. Good evening. We hope to be able to show you several um, dishes that are just a little bit different. We try to use everything grown locally. At our um, deli and cooking school, we try to stress the local products. If we can't find a locally grown product, then of course we go and find something else. But um, we, from the vegetables to the seasonings to the wine we use, it's um, all Big Island. And uh, Georgia has been helping me with the cooking classes that we have been having at our school. And um, we make a pretty good team. So let's see if we can entertain you tonight. Good evening. Hmm. We're doing, we're starting out with the ring of the sea shrimp, which um, we have the water already boiling. We'll just add a little bit of uh, Hawaiian sea salt to the water. This is the ring of, ring of the sea, sea shrimp. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the reason for the name, you'll see when we 
do the presentation. We put the um, pickling spice or the um, um, shrimp boil in there. It just kind of helps flavor the shrimp while it's cooking. And the shrimp doesn't have to cook a lot. You just want it to cook till it's just pink. So we'll throw the shrimp in there. And in the meantime, I'll be working on the sauce for it. And what size shrimp would, would be best for this particular This dish? was the 4155 count. 4155 count. Mm -hmm. We have a cup of mayonnaise. You can use this as a marinade, but um, I also like to serve it with the way we're going to be presenting the shrimp. We're just going to serve this on the side. And you can dip the shrimp in it. We have a handy little gadget. for peeling the shrimp. Makes it nice and fast. This is a wonderful object. <laughs> Much easier than a press. So that's just kind of a rubber tubing? Uh-huh. I see. Since I had kitchen shops in the mainland. I'm kind of geared toward kitchen gadgets. And um, I just love them. I think they work so great and they're fun to use. And we just want to mince the garlic a little bit. When you're in the kitchen, you need to keep your nails kind of short, especially when I'm mincing garlic. I have taken nails in with it. <laughs> And I don't think you want to eat nails. <laughs> so you've been cooking just about all your life, right, Sonia? Since I was about 14 years old. Uh -huh. My very first try was a caramel pie. And it was runny, the crust was horrible, and I put it on top of the refrigerator for it to cool. And I was dating at that time, and um, my fiance came, and he decided he wanted to look what it, to see what it looked like, and he opened the refrigerator door thinking it was in the refrigerator, but it was cooling on top, and I hadn't put it too far back, and when he opened the door, the whole thing just fell right on him. That was the beginning of my culinary profession. The recipe calls for one clove of garlic, but most people, me included, like garlic, so I always put a little bit more. And Sonia, you've studied under several uh, cookbook authors uh, from Florence, uh, Italy? Giuliano Bugiali in Florence, I Italy. He uh -huh. is uh, from um, the Florence area. He has written several cookbooks. He's also a cooking school teacher. He goes around the country and internationally doing cooking classes in different cooking schools all over the mainland and Europe. And I took classes under Jacques Pepin which um, has his own TV show. He and Shirley Corrier from Atlanta, who's a fantastic cooking school teacher. She's not very well known, but she is wonderful. And she just has a new book out. If you find it, it's, it's worth buying. So what did you put inside the mayonnaise there? So mayonnaise, I just put the garlic, garlic in, there. in there. Okay. And then we're going to do a tablespoon of honey, and this honey is also from the Big Island, right around Popeye Co. And how do you find uh, the Big Island compared to Florida and uh, is it South Carolina? 
Well, let's just put it this way. I don't think I'll ever live in Florida or South Carolina again. This is, this is it. This is home now. And, uh, What is that, just, that you're adding? Hmm? What was that that you just added? Dijon mustard. Dijon mustard. And I'm using the country style, which is sort of like little chunky, but with the shrimp, it just makes it much nicer. And then creamy whipped horseradish. We will be dipping our shrimp in here. Mm. And they're just looking just right. Mm -hmm. Getting pink. Is this one of your own creations, uh, Sonia? Or? The sauce is not. The presentation for the shrimp is. I see. And we do catering. And this is something that is quite popular and we do it fairly often. So where, where is the Akaka Falls Inn located? It's on the main street of Honomu on the way up to Akaka Falls. If you're taking family and friends to Akaka Falls, you have to pass by our place. No way that you can bypass us. And um, Honomu is a very nice little town. I've been living there since I moved to the Big Island. And um, have a lot of friends. And we have, um, our place has a bed and breakfast and a deli and a pizza shop. And uh, we do cooking classes and we do catering. So if I wanted to take some cooking classes, what, what do I do? Just give you a buzz? Give us a call or email us or fax us. I think um, I gave you a sheet that has the information where they can contact us. Mm-hmm. And um, we have a special program for people from the neighbor islands or from the mainland that can come and uh, spend four nights with us, five days, and we do cooking classes and tours of places of culinary interest on the island. And we take them to... And so you like to use as much uh, local produce as possible. And uh, I, if, if I can have the Elmo, if there's any uh, local producers out there, you might give uh, Sonia a call and because she'd like to have your quality local agricultural produce. And uh, I don't know, let's see, but maybe I can zoom that in a little bit more here. And uh, that's a little better right there. <clears throat> so if there's any uh, growers, uh, are, if there are any growers out there that are producing a lot of uh, local agricultural produce uh, and you want to uh, uh, market some at Akaka Falls Inn, I think Sonia is always interested, so please give her a call. Maybe we can s switch the camera back over to the shrimp. Looks good. Looks beautiful. Nice, delicate pink color. Another thing we like to do with local product, I was born in Cuba, and on the island of Cuba, we use guavas for a lot of different things. And I noticed that here we use it mainly for like juice and jelly and some marmalades. But we make a dessert in Cuba that you can find even commercially canned. Um, in Florida, was quite popular. You take the guavas, and as big as you can, and you start peeling it. I'm gonna do just a few. We have some already done, but I just wanna show you what you can do. It just upsets me to see so many guavas just going to waste all over the roadsides. So there are several things I'm gonna show you you can do with them that you cannot find in the grocery stores. So, Sonia, you're, are you preparing the guava shells in syrup now? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the second. We uh, have the dish. water boiling. Um, it's uh, sugar and uh, water. For every cup of sugar, you use one cup of water. Make a syrup. And um, peel your guava to take just a little bit of skin. You don't want to take the shell because that's what we're going to use. 
then you take a spoon and scoop out the centers. And you don't throw away the centers. With the seed and the flesh that you take out, you can put that in a pot with just sugar, no water, just sugar, and cook it down. And this will generate its own water. And you make, um, you can make marmalade with that. So you don't want your guava to be overripe. You want it to be on the firmer side. Fairly right? firm. Mm -hmm. Okay, the first dish that uh, Sonia and George have prepared for us is the uh, ring of the sea shrimp. Ring of the sea shrimp, right? It sounds uh, like she sells seashells. Yeah, it's kind of a tongue twister there. And right now, Sonia is preparing for us the guava shell in syrup. This one's a little bit done. It's a little bit ripe, but it'll do okay. <clears throat> I had a great time making our sample this morning and standing over these guavas as they cook. It smells so wonderful. Uh -huh. We serve them um, in Cuba. It's usually served with um, cream cheese or a white farmer's cheese because the guavas are so powerful and so um, strong, the taste that you need something else to kind of balance it with. So tonight we're going to serve them with hamakua goat cheese. Mm. There's a farm, in fact, there's a couple of farms on the island that um, do wonderful goat cheese. And we have been experimenting several recipes with them, and they work just fine. Is this con considered a poo poo or a No, this is a dessert. This okay. is a dessert. A dessert. This is a great thing, too. You know, you go along the road, and you see thousands of guavas by the roadside. You could pick these up and prepare them, and you froze them, right? Did you cook them first before you froze them? The ones uh, that we started with this morning? No, uh, we we froze them for a couple of days because I didn't have time to do them any earlier, but and I didn't want them to spoil, so we just froze the raw oh. shells. Just like here? Just like they okay. are now in a bowl, and then like Georgia said, she cooked them this morning. What about uh, the guavas that are real sour? Since you're using a syrup with it, it will kind of take care of that. I see. But the ones that are grown commercially, the, the big guavas will mm -hmm. be wonderful for this if, if you can find any in the market, which they're kind of hard to find. That's uh, the table guava that you're talking yes. about. Yes. Mm -hmm. just, uh, we're just gonna do a few just to show you what to do. One more? No, this should be it. Take the guavas and you put them in the syrup. And you can't put too many at one time. But these should do. Okay. And you'll see in a little while they'll start as they soften, they'll start kind of curling up and making a little, like a seashell. They fall into themselves, and that's how you know they're ready. That's just boiling water, that, or hot water, is it? Or is it boiling? It's um, sugar and water. It's sugar a syrup. And water. Okay. Now, tonight we're going to dispose of this, but normally, even the peels, you can cook. Put in a pot, add sugar, and uh, just cook it down. When they are nice and cooked, you can pass them through a colander and keep the seeds. And then um, the rest of it, you can cook a little bit longer and put in your little jars like you would preserves. If you want it even thicker, to fill puff pastry or anything like that, after it's um, cooked after it's um, 
after you put it through the colander or the chinois, you cook it some more till it just cooks down into a, a goo. It just makes it really nice and thick. And this is wonderful to take. You can even use um, Pepperidge Farm um, puff pastry sheets and you cut them in uh, four, each sheet in four pieces. Put a dab of this and a little bit of cream cheese in the center of it, fold it, and it makes kind of like a little triangle. With a fork, you seal the edges of that triangle and then brush them with a little bit of uh, sugar water on top and bake them. And when the puff pastry puffs up and they're ready, they're just wonderful. You have the cream cheese and, and the guava in there. So you see, there's a lot of things you can do with the guavas. Is that too sweet to be used as a jam? It's very thick and very sweet. You'll get to taste it tonight. You can just dip in there and taste, but it's, it's really, really very concentrated. And as you can see, look how thick. And um, in Cuba and in Miami where I was living, and in Mexico also, they make it this concentrated and they pour it in little wooden boxes, little boxes about like that, and they sell them. You can buy the bar, you know, like that, that you can just cut and serve. Okay, while they're cooking. How's our guava halves doing? Get this wonderful syrup in the in the pan too as the the guava cooks down. Mm -hmm. Makes a pink syrup in there. Um, can you smell them already? Okay, we're also going to show you. We're going to be doing several things at one time, so it all comes out ready at the same time. Need the oranges and the chips. So for those of you just joining us, you're watching Agriculture 194Q, no, Focus on Agriculture, a one credit here? course offered by the mm -hmm. College of Agriculture at UH Hilo. And this evening we're featuring the uh, Kaka Falls Inn, and we have with us the owner, Sonia Martinez, and her, her assistant, Georgia Bannon. And they have created for us, uh, or they're preparing for us, um, the Ring of the Sea Shrimp, guava shell in syrup, and I believe the next on board is uh, the orange halves stuffed with taro. Mm -hmm. Okay, orange halves stuffed with taro. Hmm, that sounds interesting. Now in the mainland, they buy the taro, which we call, in my country, we call malanga. Um, it's a form of taro, but this kind of cheese is a Stilton cheese that you can't find here or made here. But the farm in Hamakua that makes the goat cheese is trying to experiment now with goat cheese to try to make something close to it. When they do, then we will be using that. In the meantime, I just have to use the Stilton. But what we do is um, the cheese and um, we use orange, the little bit of juice and the little bit of um, orange um, bits and pieces. Mix them together with a little bit of salt and pepper and soy sauce, a dark soy. And Georgia, you're, you're preparing the orange halves? Yes, and I made about a dozen of these this morning before I got the secret of peeling off the, the inside. What you want to do is go for the white membrane and try to p lift it away and then it takes all the unnecessary pulp out. So you're taking all the, the orange out, out of there and just leaving the, the, the peel actually. Yeah? So you have a little mm -hmm. orange boat. Makes a little, nice little cup. You know, I should have brought a And is this, is this a dessert? Uh, no, so this yeah. is not a dessert either. This is a vegetable. Okay. It's, um, I served this, we went to a 
potluck Thanksgiving a couple of years ago to the home of some friends, and I told them I was bringing boy. And they, a couple of them, Howleys that had never had it, they said, oh, I hear poi, it's not tasty, it's just bland, there's nothing to it. How in the world are you going to serve poi for Thanksgiving? <laughs> so I took these and we had, I think we took, what, about 24 of the little orange shells and uh, none, none came back. It was the most wonderful thing I'd ever had and I'd never had poi before. So now I have to have it with orange and garlic and all these things. <laughs> so Sonia, you put the cheese inside. That's the uh, mashed up uh, poi, is it? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then two, what are you adding to two that? Two tablespoons of soy sauce. Tablespoons of soy sauce. And then we will be doing the bits and pieces of orange in there. You can kind of get your finger in here under the, the membrane and pull, help pull it out once you've got it going. So you mix the orange in there also then? Mm-hmm. Even the little bits and pieces of the orange. To get the bits of the orange go between the membrane just like you're, you would be doing a grapefruit. And you don't want the membrane in there so you just get the fruit part. And where, where would you say uh, this dish originated uh, or Surprisingly enough, no, it wasn't Hawaii. I found this recipe in a um, vegetable cookbook that originated in England. And they were using taro? They were using taro. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that story. <laughs> so can you buy the uh, commercial prepared uh, poi and, uh, or do you like to cook your own taro? Frankly, I buy the commercially prepared. I have a supplier that lives in Honomu, and he brings me very, very fresh poi. And his poi is one of the best I have ever tasted. So I, and like I say, I like to encourage and help support the local. So can't get any more local than just Honomu for me. So if a student goes to your classes, do they get some kind of a certificate, uh, Sonia? Yes, we do. We give them a, a certificate. We do a series of classes, like during the summer we had the cakey cooking classes, and we only teach four at a time. We, our classes are held in a home-style kitchen, and um, we had um, two boys, two girls. They in ages from um, 11 to 13. And um, n the things that we worked on, we even worked on, we made paella, we made um, Italian dishes, we made Spanish, we made uh, Mexican and uh, German Polish dish. And we stress not only the cooking classes, but table manners, table etiquette, how to serve, how to present food. And how to hold back the chair for the ladies present. That was a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> they learned napkin folding. And it was really funny because the girls would try to get the more elaborate folds to do, you know, very, the flowers, the water lilies and all that. And the boys would try to just fold as quick as they could. And that was it. But it was fun. And, um, we had um, a series of four classes each session, um, June, July, and August. And um, I learned about as much as they did as I was teaching them. It was a lot of fun. One of the best things about that, too, was that when we would sit down to eat, we would practice having real conversation 
you know, um, everybody had an opportunity to say something, and um, I think that's a very good experience for young people to learn how to do that. So you all sample all the, the dishes that you prepare? Oh, we sat down to a regular meal mm. and um, served, and, and we ate everything. We did everything from um, the salad to the main dish, the drink that went with it, a vegetable and it was kind of funny because some of our kids would say oh I don't eat this we had a rule at the table that you had to taste no matter what it was you had to take at least the taste and some of the ones that said they didn't like whatever it was ended up liking it and getting seconds so that's one thing that you have to learn is that just because you might have had something one time that you didn't like the way it was prepared. We there never can had be prepare that. something in a different way and you might like it then. We never had that problem with the desserts. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> the desserts were eaten completely. Okay. Well, is this class mostly for kids, or do you do it for adults also? We do for adults also, um, but the summer sessions were just the kids. I see. Now, the orange halves are just like a container then. It's the cup holding the poi with the cheese and soy. I didn't put the salt and pepper in, but the ones you're going to be eating tonight are salt and pepper. I just want to show you how to how these are prepared. How far ahead could you do this, Sonia? Could you do this part the day you ahead? You can do so this the day ahead and then just put them in the oven a couple of um, oh, about maybe 20 minutes or so before serving. Okay. Would well, you so have now soap after in? you do this you put this in the oven? You put them in the oven. And since we don't have an oven here we won't be doing these but the ones we brought are ready for you to eat but this is the way then you just put them in a glass dish or a baking pan and bake them for about 20 minutes or so at 350 degrees and that helps the cheese meld in with the poi it gives it a really nice flavor by the way any of you that would like copies of our recipes just give us a ring and we'll mail them to you Okay, and uh, let me uh, put that, uh, let's see, what did I do with your number? You're going to get inundated with phone calls there, Sonia. There, if I could have the Elmo, uh, there's a the number you can call. And uh, Sonia, be prepared to answer your phone tomorrow. So is this uh, orange, uh, orange half stuffed with taro served warm or cold? Either way, they can be served cold. Okay. Um, but you need to bake them because that helps the cheeses blend in with the poi. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's the orange half stuffed with taro. And one more time, how, how long do you uh, bake that? And at what About 20, 25 minutes in a 350 degree oven. Okay. So, uh, we have ring of the sea shrimp, uh, guava shell in syrup, and the orange half stuffed with taro. And uh, how's the orange halves coming? They're done. I'll show you. Can you, you mean the we guava? Get the, the guava camera. shells. There we go. See oh, yeah. how uh, beautiful the color is. Okay. And um, they're just soft to the touch of your spoon, kind of pliable, but still firm. Still have their shape. Hey, we're going to try to do our Hawaiian sweet potato. Okay. So the next uh, dish that Sonia is going to prepare is the Hawaii, Hawaiian sweet potato ali'i. Fit for kings. Okay.
The original recipe said supreme, and you can't get any more supreme than being ali'i, so. Now that's Hawaiian style. <clears throat> and is this something that uh, you kind of... Uh, this was mine. Your own <laughs> dish, creation, okay. I lived in South Carolina many, many years, and we used regular yams. And my original recipe called for yams, and since I've been here, I've been using um, the purple sweet potatoes, which I really, really like to use. Now, how did you get to that stage in the sweet potato? You, you boiled it, or? Okay, just peel them and boil them, uh -huh. and uh, till they're done, okay. and then you, this, the first time I did this, this was shocking. When you break the egg into the sweet potato and you let it sit for a little while, the sweet potatoes turn green, but don't let it shock you. It's just that yellow and purple turn green. And, but once you mix it together, it does fine. In the meantime, Georgia is going to be toasting the macadamia nuts. Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> You'll see. You'll wait a few minutes and you'll see. Okay. And for those of you joining us for the first time, you're watching Agriculture 194Q, a one credit course offered by the College of Agriculture, Forestry and Natural Resource Management here at the University of Hawaii Hilo. And now, Sonia, you're getting the local macadamia nuts. Mm -hmm. And these have been roasted or? These are raw. Raw. Okay. And we're going to kind of roast them a little bit on top of the stove. Okay. This is going to be very, very noisy, so if you want to do something else in the meantime. Okay. So you just want it in little pieces, not uh, to a real powder or anything. Right. You have to be very careful with the blade on a food processor because they are really, really, really sharp. What we're going to do is, since we don't have an oven here, we'll try to melt the butter at the same time that we're kind of toasting the macadamias. And we're going to use the macadamia in a couple of dishes. The pineapple dessert we're doing calls for the nuts and um, also the sweet potato. This is like what you do when you're camping. <laughs> These are pretty much vegetarian dishes, right? With the exception of, uh, I don't know if you consider cheese as uh, vegetarian, but. Oops. Okay. See how it's turning green? Maybe we can get an overhead shot of the. Uh... <laughs> it's really, really funny. Just kind of mash them down a little bit to mix the eggs. And the purpose of the egg is to kind of bind it together? or Well, it actually is what causes it to rise and form sort of like a little souffle. Uh -huh. And it won't be green, believe me, when we get through with it. You'll have to excuse me, I cut myself. That little knife cutting the oranges mm -hmm. was very, very sharp. Do you need a bandage? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do. But we, we brought provisions for everything except for cuts. I think we have a first aid kit, Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Yes, we can't have the cook bleeding into the food. That won't do. <laughs> I've been trying not to. <laughs> I 
and saw the macadamia nuts coming. Oh, thank you. They're still not quite toasted enough. Okay. It'll take a little bit of time. But you can begin to smell them as they toast. So we both use our noses a lot in cooking. A little bit of salt. Salt actually brings the sweetness out. And Some then sugar. About how much sugar, about how much sweet potato is that? Uh, well, the recipe calls for four cups, and what we made for us to taste is four cups. This mm -hmm. is just to show you what we did. Oh, this is. And I'm just improvising here I now see. and just adding. Okay. I'm ready for emergencies. Oh, good. <laughs> it's up here. Okay. Okay, I can't use this towel anymore. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> and a little bit of butter. So when you're toasting the macadamia nuts, you, you're going to add the butter to it? Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. This is very Not to hot. the whole thing. I'm going to need some more butter for the... And you add a little butter to the uh, sweet potato. When you're doing the nuts, you've got to stay right on top of them because they, once they start getting hot, they, they'll burn on you. A little mm -hmm. bit of milk. Regular, regular milk. We use skim at home, so I just use skim for everything. Okay. Unless the recipe calls for cream or, you know, something that has to be really creamy and to bind with the cream, I usually just use skim. This kind of fluffs it up. Sounds like a drill. That will do. Yeah, I think that will do. I'm going to need the coconut and the brown sugar. Just mash it. Mm -hmm. mm, I can smell the macadamia nut now. Oh, the little spatula. Wonderful colors. Yeah, that uh, purple sweet potato is really nice. Uh, like royalty, purple. That's right. That's why it's ali'i. Okay. Then what, what do you do with that mixture? We're going to put a topping of flake coconuts brown sugar, the macadamia nuts, and melted butter. Oh, I need a little bit of vanilla. And then? And then it goes in the oven and you bake it. Ah, I see. Just and is this uh, more or less a dessert or? No, it's also a main course. Uh -huh. it's, it's just a side dish, actually. It's got um, the vanilla bean in it. And how much, how much uh, vanilla did you put in there? About a teaspoon. Okay. But normally you make a, a larger quantity of this, but for the we made a larger quantity earlier to uh -huh. bring for you to taste. But I just wanted to demonstrate, show you how to how to do it. Okay. Well, that's uh, really using uh, our local produce in very uh, unique ways. this. And We're going to use, this is uh, flaked coconut. 
and is also from here, from the island. And brown sugar. Brown sugar. The and nuts macadamia. are nice and warm. And a little bit of butter left over. And this is kind of like a crumbly topping for top of the sweet potato. And then you just pop it into the oven. So in North Carolina, you use yams then? We use yams. Okay. And the coconut I used to use was the coconut that you get in cans. And uh -huh. this is so much better. Enough butter? Yeah. So then you just sprinkle it right on top. Put it right on top, and then this just goes in the oven. And uh, <clears throat> what is the consistency once it's uh, baked? Kind of like um, thick souffle. Mm -hmm. It's still light, but if, if something can be dense and light at the same time, this is it. <laughs> okay. That's our Hawaii Hawaiian sweet potato, sweet potato ali. ali. Mm -hmm. And we've got two more dishes coming up. Uh, what's next? The quick pork tenderloin? We're going to be doing the pork tenderloin. Okay, that's a quick pork tenderloin in Hoisin sauce. I'm not too sure what hoisin sauce is, and I'm sure Sonia will garlic. explain. Mm -hmm. And the sauce ingredients. And I guess you use a tenderloin, pork tenderloin, right? Pork tenderloin. Which actually cooks really, really fast. You cook it at 500 degrees. First, I make a few little holes in there, and we will stuff it with garlic. Like I told you, I love garlic. And the garlic is also good for your health, right? That's right. How long have you been opened over there at Akaka uh, Falls Inn? Since um, May of 95. Mm. Just stuff the garlic in the little cavities. And of course, for those of you who just tuned uh, into us, you're watching Agriculture 194Q, Focus on Agriculture, a one credit course offered by the College of Agriculture and for Forestry and Natural Resource Management. And this evening we're featuring the Akaka Falls Inn. And we have with us the owner, Sonia Martinez. And assisting Sonia, we have Georgia uh, uh, Bannon. And so far, uh, we're going to have for you the ring of the sea shrimp, guava shell in syrup, orange half stuffed with taro, and the Hawaiian sweet potato ali'i. And we're doing the quick pork tenderloin in the hoisin sauce. What is hoisin sauce? Hoisin sauce is an oriental sauce. Very thick, very, um, it's kind of a, a sweet taste. It's, um, it's good with a lot of things, with chicken and shrimp and all that, but I, I love using it with a pork. Mm. And this is a recipe I learned in South Carolina. And we used to do a picnic class in our cooking school, and this was one of the things we used to prepare in our picnic class. Now, what we do is you marinate the pork in a sauce that you make with the hoisin. Okay, now what's the sauce consist of? Okay, you put hoisin. 
wine. And in this case, we're using our own wine from the oven. Okay, and some soy, soy. sauce. A little bit of sugar. And some butter. And once the butter's melt, the marinade is uh, about ready. Mm -hmm. Then all you do, since it's hot, you pour it over the meat and that kind of sears the meat. It closes it up so all the juices stay in there. Okay. <clears throat> you smell it? Mm -hmm. See, what are we going to put that in? What do you need? How about right here? And the, the final dish, uh, while uh, Sonia's preparing the quick uh, pork tenderloin and hoisin sauce, uh, they're also going to prepare for us a pineapple macadamia nut charlet. Charlotte. Charlotte. And this uh, pineapple macadamia charlotte, is that uh, kind of uh, southern and Hawaiian put together? I guess you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> the same lady that taught me how to do the, the pork and uh, hoisin sauce taught me how to do. We use a mixture of Clorox and water whenever we're for keeping everything clean. Okay. And always when you're in the kitchen, I always put a towel around me and that's the one that you use for everything that your hands and so not to wipe the counters, just for your hands. Those are lady fingers? Lady fingers, Jeez, the cake style, not time. the biscuit kind, not the hard ones. These are real nice and soft and pliable. And those are available locally? I get these at um, KTA. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Sometimes you have to order them ahead of time. They might not always have them. That's from the bake shop. From the bake shop. Mm -hmm. You line the mold with the lady fingers. Who had a bow? Right there. Clean it out. Put the butter. Pour. Um. Don't worry, we have one made. Okay, and then uh, what are we going to add to the butter? We add sugar okay. and um, crushed pineapple and Cool Whip and vanilla. Have you ever used the um, our real uh, sweet white pineapple for this particular dish? No, I haven't. Those are too good. Uh, Those we just dig in and eat. Fresh, I see. <clears throat> and about a cup of, uh, cup sugar. of butter. I mean, of um, sugar. And kind of cream your butter with the sugar. And that hoisin sauce, how, how hot does the sauce have to uh, You be? want it to boil. I see, okay. And is this uh, Hawaiian or this uh, pineapple macadamia charlotte a uh, creation of your own? 
No. Okay. No, I can't take credit for this one. This um, very good friend of mine who's a cooking school teacher and cookbook writer in Atlanta came up with this recipe. Except that in Atlanta she used pecans because that's what they have all over the place. But here we have macadamia, so that's what I use. We have a homemade vanilla. And how do you make the homemade vanilla? Take a vanilla bean and cut it to open it and put it in a bottle with pure alcohol and pure. let it sit for several months and it makes your own vanilla. And where do you get the pure alcohol from? A drugstore. Uh -huh. And uh, actually, you can just buy the dried uh, vanilla bean. The vanilla bean, the pod. And how much alcohol do you put in with the? Uh... It was this little bottle full with just one bean. Uh huh. That vanilla bean is very expensive. Very. But you can reuse it. That bean can be reused once it's the vanilla is used. I see. Also, another fun thing to do take a vanilla bean and uh, make the slit on it and put it in a jar with um, sugar and it will make your sugar taste like the vanilla so and that you keep using over and over I think this is ready all right and take all the juice out of the out of the pineapple okay very important to get that pressed out because then it won't set if you don't have all the juice out. Our macadamias. And what's the next ingredient? We'll put the macadamia nuts in it. Let's just dump them in. And these have been toasted, like we did the ones for the sweet potato. Mm -hmm. It brings out the flavor more. Okay. And then the cool whip. Usually after I make this and put it into the mold, I put it in the freezer for a while to, for it to set. And even though it freezes, it doesn't get hard. It just gets firm and holds its shape nicely. And then when you unmold it, you can slice it like you would a cake. You don't have to kind of fold it in. You can just mix it right in. Just mix it right in. And then, uh, do you have to bake that or? No, just put it in the freezer. Oh, I see. You can make this several days ahead and leave it in the freezer for several days. And just pour. And you can put layers of lady fingers in between. Interesting. Make it that into a so cream good. pie. Hmm? If you put a, a pie crust around that, you hmm? could do it. I have never done it, but that would be a good idea. You could make a cream pie. Now this would go into the freezer, just like that. Okay. And how's our hoisin sauce coming, Georgia? It's done. Okay. Let's pour that over our meat. All of it. Mm -hmm. And how long do you leave that sit? 
you can do it for at least two hours. You can do it overnight. Uh huh. And if you put it, leave it overnight, then you'll have more flavoring in the pork. Yes. Okay. Where are we? Hey. I guess that's it. And so now I guess uh, you can. Pre now we'll show you. Uh, what everything looks like. So Sonia, maybe while you're starting to put everything together, do you think we might be able to feel some questions from the community? Sure. Okay, well, it's a little past eight o'clock, so uh, we are coming to you live from the television studios located in the Molokini Library. So we've come to that portion of the class where those of you in the viewing audience and of course those of you here in the studio can ask questions of uh, Sonia Martinez and uh, Georgia Banyan. And uh, our numbers are on the screen. The numbers are 974-7726, 974-7727. And of course those of you on the outer islands, you can call us at 96, uh, collect at 961-9046. Uh, we have our first caller, so will the first caller let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Hi, I'm calling from Camuela. Okay. I'm calling about the purple potato. Uh-huh. Um, she said she used skip milk. Uh -huh. Is it possible for me to use regular carnation milk, diluted? Okay. Uh, Sonia, did you hear that question? Yes, you can use carnation milk. Um, with it, you can use um, regular milk, you can use cream. If you add cream, of course, it'll be much creamer, but the carnation milk will make it very nice and creamy also. Also, you think I could add coconut milk to that uh, batter that you made with the sweet potato? I couldn't hear Can you. you add coconut milk to the sweet potato dish? Oh, you could. That just would make it into something completely different again. That's the fun of cooking. You can experiment. And do you know how, what's the um, measurement for all of those? How many potatoes do I need? How many potatoes do you need? Uh, oh, well, what you can do is you can uh, either get our cookbook uh, later on, uh, or else you can call Sonia at 963-5468, uh, and she'll tell you how it is. And then again, if you would like, uh, our cookbook, uh, which will have all of these recipes uh, for all 16 sessions that we have this semester, you can get a hold of me and ask me about it at uh, these different ways of getting uh, in touch with me. So if you come up with some good dish over there in Camuela by adding the coconut milk, and if it tastes real good, send us the recipe and we'll incorporate it in our cookbook with your name. Okay, thank you. Thank you for thank calling you. from Comwell. Bye. Also, uh, for those of you who are taking the course for credit, uh, if you happen to miss one lecture, uh, you can send us a nice recipe and I'll give you credit for one session if you <laughs> give us a recipe, not just one time though, okay? So if you have a recipe that you'd like to uh, send to us, uh, please uh, send it to me and uh, my address is here on the the Elmo, and if you have time, you can even uh, email it to me as an attachment if you have it on some word processor. So we have two callers. Will the next caller let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? So this could be seen. Hello? Hello? Yes, where are you calling from? Uh, I'm calling from Kamana. Okay, Kamana. Uh, I just wanted to say um, that they did a nice presentation on, on the dishes. Okay. And I wanted to know, like, um, what are the hours? Uh, what are your hours over there, Sonia? We're open from 10 to 5, our, our regular hours, and then the pizza kitchen is open from 11 in the morning till 8 o'clock in the evening. Yeah, okay. very nice dishes and very well made. Thank you. It looks delicious. Thank well, you. Okay, thank you. We can't wait here either. Bye-bye. <laughs> and thank you for calling from Kalmana. <laughs> we have another caller, uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please. Hi, Dr. Fuji. Hi. How are you? Okay. This is Pat. Oh, yes, Pat. Hi. How much uh, from, pineapple from did you Honomu. use? <laughs> okay. How much pineapple did you use? How much pineapple did you use? Uh, 
for that. One can of pineapples. That's one can of uh, pineapple pack. One cup of sugar. One cup of sugar. One container of Cool Whip. And a container of Cool Whip. One cup of macadamia nuts. And a cup of macadamia nuts. Vanilla to taste. And vanilla to taste. And one stick of butter. And a stick of butter. Uh, hope we didn't cut you off there, Pat, but I hope you got the, uh, the ingredients. So if you want to call us again, you're certainly welcome to do that, Pat. But in the meantime, we'll take the next caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Hello, you're on the air? Hi. Hi. This is Dorothy. I'm calling from Hilo. Uh-huh. I'm very interested in her, t in her cooking technician. Uh-huh. Um, I would like to know if she ever does sweet potato pie the southern style. Sweet potato pie southern style. Sonia. I've done it, but I am not the best southern cook you've ever seen. <laughs> Well, you see, every time I go to the mainland, I have to hand carry sweet potato pies back to Hilo. Because it's one of my family's favorite pies, and I can never make it the way my mother-in-law makes it. And I've been looking for people that does it here in Hawaii. I go to all the hotels and restaurants, and they don't seem to have it. No. I guess we just no. can't get that, that little southern thing You here just have them. to find one of these little old southern cooks to do it for you. <laughs> Well, I sure appreciate your show tonight. I'm very interested in your cooking classes every Thursday evening, which I make it a point to watch. Thank you. Thank you very much. Come to see us sometime. Presentation. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you for calling from Hilo. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Okay. I'm Hello? calling from Hilo. Yes. And I would like to know, um, for the chalet, how long do you keep it in the freezer? Okay, the Charlotte, uh, how long do you keep it in the freezer? You can keep it several days, you can keep it one hour, just enough for it to firm up. And how long, how many days does that last? Um, three, four days, uh, you can do it ahead of time. Just leave it in the freezer? Leave it in the freezer, cover it, make sure it doesn't get freezer burns. And Georgia, okay, thank you. You're, you're Georgia's unmolding it. Unmolding the, uh, what is that, the pineapple macadamia charlotte. Oops, right there. Oh, yes, it looks real, real good there with the lady fingers all around the side. Oh, okay, well, well, well. we'll <laughs> and the lady fingers back. came from KTA. Uh, well, they did, but we're not supposed to do any uh, advertising. But, uh, <laughs> Okay, Let's thank you. Your okay. local grocery store. Thank you very much for calling from Hilo. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling yeah. from and go ahead with the question, please? Hi, I'm calling from uh, Kamuela. Uh huh. And um, uh, just some comments. Uh, very, very good uh, pres presentation tonight. And uh, before you, you go off the air, can you get some close ups of those Jeez. food? I mean, it looks great preparing. It, preparing for it, but uh, can I get some close-up shots on it? Uh, well, <laughs> once uh, <coughs> once we uh, uh, get everything presented there, we'll try to get the camera to pan in on all the, the different dishes that they prepared. Okay, and uh, where, where are they located in Honomu? Okay, they're on that main road that goes to Akaka Falls. And uh, is it on the right side or the left side as left you go Left-hand side. It's all residential on the right-hand side. All the businesses are on the left-hand side. We have quite a few little businesses up there now. Oh, that's before... Oh, no, who's waking up? Is that before the church? Is it before the church? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you for calling. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Yeah, um, I'm calling from Kahului, Maui. Okay, Maui. Mm -hmm. And um, I was wondering, um, I wanted, I'm going to be moving up to Hilo. Uh -huh. And I wanted to know um, if the prices at this restaurant is, um, is reasonable. Okay. Because I like to eat out. All right, uh, Sonia, I'll let you answer that. <laughs> Our prices are very, very reasonable, but we're not really a restaurant. We're a deli and a pizza shop. Um, most of these dishes we cook for our cooking classes. We are doing a series of cooking classes that when, once you move to Hilo, you can come and sign up for classes, and then you'll learn how to do all of these. 
And um, all the participants in our cooking classes get to sit down and eat the complete meal once we prepare it. Oh, okay. And um, good food. Let's honor. Thank so you. Good dinner, must smell a vision. Really, no? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you for calling from Kahului, Maui. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, have please? Plates. Hello. Hi. Hi. My, um, I'm calling from Kailua Kona. Okay. And you know the the meat that was marinated, the pork. Yes. Um, how how do you how how long do you cook it? Okay. Uh, so after you marinate the, the uh, pork tenderloin, Sonia, how long do you bake it? Or you put it at 500 degrees. You have to cook it very high temperature, and you it you cook it for about nine, ten minutes on each side. These were fairly thick tenderloins, so I had to really cook them a little bit longer. They cooked for 15 minutes on either side. But one way to gauge what you're doing is with the cooking instant read cooking thermometer. This is not the kind that you stick in the meat and you leave it there in the oven. If you do that, you'll ruin the thermometer. This one you just stick in the uh, thickest part of the meat and once it reads 145 between 145 and 160 you know the meat is done. So it's nice to invest in one of these little instant read meat thermometers. It comes just like a pen. You can just stick it on and use it when you need it. Okay, does that answer the question from Kona? Yes, thank you. Thank you for calling. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. I'm calling from Honamu. Okay. Sonia and Georgia, this is Terry. Oh, You've done a lovely job promoting not only your restaurant but our town, too. Uh, my two daughters went through Sonia and, and Georgia's first cooking class. and. Uh -huh. They just did a wonderful job with them, and we also got to eat the lunches that they brought home across the street, too. So, good job, Sonia and Georgia. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you for calling from Honolulu. Uh, do we have another caller? We don't have a caller, so for those of you who are watching us, here we are coming to you live this evening from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library here on the University of Hawaii Hilo campus. And uh, since we are coming to you live, we're fielding questions. The numbers are on the screen. Look at this. And, we, so and we have a caller. So will the caller let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Hi. My name is Annette. I'm calling for Kiyonua. OK. And you know when she made the shrimp in the beginning of the show? Uh-huh. She put the Hawaiian salt first. Uh-huh. What was the second ingredient? What was the second ingredient that you put inside the, um, the water? Is it like red or whatever? This is Old Bay seasoning that oh. you can use, but you can use pickling spices. You can also use shrimp boil. Yeah. I couldn't find any at the store, so I use this. Okay, you. Thank just you. need something to flavor it with. Okay, thank you for thank you. calling from Pihonua, my old stomping grounds up there. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? I'm calling from Mihilo, uh -huh. and I would like to find out where you got the thermometer for the meat. Where did you get the thermometer for the meat? I used to own a kitchen shop in Florida, and this one I had in my store. But you can get them um, at any place that carries kitchen gadgets usually has them, or you can... Uh, uh, if you receive any of the cooking catalogs, like William Sonoma or something like that, they usually have them in there. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you for calling. We have a caller, uh, not a caller, but a question from one of our students here in the classroom. Go ahead. Yes, y'all have a very lovely presentation tonight. I wanted to ask two questions. I want to know, um, what is the sturgeon cheese and if it is a product of Big Island goats? I beg your pardon? Sturgeon cheese that you, you were using in the taro? The um, cheese that That's you're... a Stilton. Stilton cheese? Stilton. That one is from England. Oh, okay. But the goat cheese farm in um, Hamakua is trying to work up a blue cheese that will come close to that. Once they do, we'll be using that instead of the Stilton. Oh, okay. And I also wanted to know, if you didn't put eggs in the um, sweet potato or lii, would it come out okay still? 
It should. You need to put a little bit more butter or cream in it like so it can get something. creamier. Could you use an egg substitute? I don't know. I never have. You could try it. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Hello? Hi. Go ahead. Where are you calling from? Hello? Hi. You're on the air. <laughs> You have to come closer I'm calling to calling some Hilo. Okay. I'd like to know more about the pork tenderloin. Uh -huh. uh, what, why is the degree so high, 500 degrees? Okay, uh, Sonia, why do you want to bake the uh, tenderloin at 500 degrees? You want to sear the meat to keep the juices in, and it the meat stays a little bit more tender when you cook it faster than if you let it cook there. If it cooks too long, it will be too leathery. I see. It's just for 10, 15 minutes, you said, on each side, huh? Uh, at least 10. Okay, thank but you very much. Use a meat thermometer, and that will tell you the temperature inside the grease. I see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for calling, and for those of you who are watching this evening, we are coming to you live from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library here on the University of Hawaii at Hilo campus. And uh, since we are coming to you live, and you come to that portion of the class where you can call in and ask questions of our uh, guest chef this evening. And uh, we are featuring Akaka Falls Inn with Sonia Martinez and Georgia uh, uh, Bannon. And we have another caller, so will the caller let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Hello, you're on the air. Hello. Hi, go ahead. Hi, uh, my name is Catelyn, calling from Mount Uh huh. And I wanted to know if instead of using pineapple, can you use any other fruit? Okay, Sonia, can you use uh, something other than pineapple for the pineapple macadamia charlotte? Well, the fun of cooking is always experimenting. I have never used any other fruit in this, but I'm sure that you could use mangoes. Mangoes would be wonderful. Um, mm. Just about anything else that, um, that is nice and, and juicy. It can't be anything too dry or too um, dense. You want something airy. Thank you so much. Well, thank You're you welcome. for calling from Mountain View. And if you ever try that, uh, we'll call it a mango macadamia charlotte. Right. And if it does taste good, uh, send us the recipe and we'll put it in the cookbook. Okay, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Good evening. I like your program very much. Thank you. I'm calling from Hilo. Uh huh. I'd like to know what kind of alcohol do you put in that? Vanilla bean. Okay, uh, the alcohol, could you explain that again, where you get the alcohol and how much you use? Pure grain alcohol. Pure grain alcohol from the drugstore. From right? the drugstore. Uh, this is one vanilla be bean inside this little uh, jar. You can use, um, you could probably use something larger and put a couple of vanilla beans in it. It just depends on how strong you want it. And then once you use the, all the alcohol, you can get more alcohol and pour in. And pour the it in and can, reuse it. And you can Excuse use it over and over, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Or you can also take it out once you use the alcohol, dry it, let it dry real good, and then put it inside a jar of sugar and you can reuse it and let the sugar taste like vanilla. Excuse me, how, do, how long do you leave it before you can use it? Uh, it just depends on how strong you want it. Oh, I see. But at least three, four months. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for calling from Hilo. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Hello, you're on the air. Did we lose our caller? Okay. Hello? Hi. Yes, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Honomu. Okay. Hi, Sonia. This is Jude calling. Hi, Jude. <laughs> uh, I think you guys did a good job, and it's a good show. And this is the first time I've been watching you folks. And I think all the food you prepared was great and sounds delicious. Thank you. Okay. 
take care. Okay, you well, too. thank you for calling from Honomu. Looks like uh, Honomu is going to be on the map uh, tonight, uh, <laughs> Sonia. Uh, do we have another caller? We do have another caller, so will the caller let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Hello, my name is Tracy Souza from uh -huh. Kahalui, Maui. Uh, okay. Wailuku, Maui. Okay. Uh, my question is uh, on the shrimp uh, dish that you cook at the beginning. Uh huh. What is all the ingredients for that dipping sauce or? Okay, the dipping sauce. Uh, do you have the ingredients, Sonia, for the dipping sauce the for dipping, the? The dipping sauce is mayonnaise, Dijon mustard, honey, uh, creamy horseradish, and uh, freshly minced garlic. Okay, and the shrimp, uh, you use that as a dipping sauce with that, that seasoning you had, the mixture? You can use it as a dipping sauce, or if you use peeled garlic, I mean peeled shrimp, you can marinate them in the sauce and just serve them like that. In this instance, we're serving them with a peeling, and we're just going to use it as a dip. All right, thank you very much. I, I love your cooking. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you for calling from uh, Wailuku, Maui. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, go ahead with your question and let us know where you're calling from. Hello, I'm calling Hi. from Anahola, Kauai. Okay, welcome. I'm enjoying the show very much. I was curious about your guava dessert. Okay. What kind of guava is it? Is it is it a sour guava that you're using, and what did you put in it? I kind of left and came back, and you were done with it. Okay, uh, Sonia? The guavas we're using are just the plain, common, side-of-the-road guavas, trees that we have near our house. And um, just um, peel, cut in half. Um, and slightly on the firm side, right? On the firm side. Uh, you peel it, you cut it in half, you scoop out the seeds and the flesh in the center, and then you cook it in equal parts sugar and water. You make a syrup out of sugar and water. And you cook it till it's done, but it's still firm. It won't fall apart on you. You and serve it in the syrup. Oh, so you didn't put any filling in it. Oh, we did put, did you put filling in? Oh, it's just the halves. Okay, there we go. Maybe the halves the and can... it's served in the syrup. Okay, the halves are just served in the syrup. So you didn't fill them? No. Okay. No. Oh, that looks delicious. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you for calling from Kauai. And I think we have a question back here from Patrick. Uh, Patrick, go ahead with your question or comment. Uh, I just had a comment to make to all the viewers and everyone is that uh, when you do go to that pharmacy, please specify to the pharmacist what you're using the alcohol for because he may not understand what you're using it for and he might give you the wrong type of alcohol and if you use that improperly, you may have some kind of a physical side effect. And just so that we can make sure everybody's safe out there in the viewing audience. Thank you. Good. So it's you not want, rubbing uh, alcohol. No, it's not rubbing alcohol. Not the, not the rubbing alcohol. No, <laughs> no, not the rubbing alcohol. Please. Yeah, let's not have that, huh? No. Right. Pure, pure grain alcohol. That's right. Okay, and they have so to specify what they're going to use it for. Right. And that's uh, what we call ethanol. So, <laughs> okay. So make sure you don't get the rubbing alcohol now. Don't get the stuff in the bottle. That's on the counter. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to go blind. Okay. Uh, yes. That's All a very right. good comment. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it takes Patrick. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, we are coming to you live this evening, and uh, you're watching Agriculture 194Q, Focus on Agriculture. And if you have a question of our guest speakers, uh, please give us a call. The numbers are on the screen, 974-7726 and 974-7727. And of course, those of you on the outer islands, you can call us collect at 961-9046. And maybe, uh, we, can we get the camera and kind of pan in on the, the dishes as you have them all prepared and displayed for us? Uh, Sonia, maybe you can kind of point to it so the camera can uh, lead to the particular dish. So what are we, what are we going to start off with, uh, Sonia? Okay, we can start with the shrimp. Okay. This is the uh, ring. 
And what we do is we take a ring mold, like so, mm -hmm. and you put a little bit of water and your seashells, or you can use flowers, you can use whatever you want in it, and, but you add the water little by little because the shells will float. So you want to capture them in the bottom before you keep adding the layers. So you need to start with this at least a couple of days ahead so you can get it to look like that. And that's a shrimp with the shrimp uh, sauce that you've got to the Here's side? Here's the sauce. Okay. And then we have the pork tenderloin and we stuffed it with the garlic cloves and cooked it at 500 degrees. We marinated it first uh, for several hours. Is that kind of medium done inside or is it kind of on the rare side? No, the... you don't cook pork on the rare side. Oh, that's right, that's right. You it's have pork. to cook it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to cook it at least 145 degrees to about 160 degrees. If you cook it any higher than that, it's too done. Well, you can tell this man here is an entomologist and not a cook. <laughs> okay, what's next there, Sonia? Next is our sweet potato ali'i. Oh, yes. And as you can see, the mixture of the coconut and the sugar and the nuts and the butter on top and the sweet potatoes are in the bottom. Mm -hmm. then, then we have our half shell orange with the poi and cheese mixture and uh, you decorate it with edible flowers. In this case, it's geraniums, which you can eat. Okay, and then? Then we have the pineapple macadamia nut charlotte with the lady fingers. Okay, and then when you serve that, you just get a knife and just kind of cut, cut it, it like into... you would a cake or a pie. Uh-huh. And then we have the guava shells in the syrup and we like to serve the guava shells with either cream cheese, a farmer's cheese, or in this case we're using a sheriff, sheriff which is the goat cheese from Hamakua. Okay, and so those are all the dishes that have been prepared for us and I think we've kind of run out of time. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the uh, Kaka Falls Inn, especially <laughs> Sonia Martinez, the uh, owner and chef there, and uh, they have a nice uh, cooking school. And also joining Sonia, we have uh, Georgia Banyan. Thank you both for joining us this evening and sharing uh, your recipes with us. And uh, next Thursday evening, we're going to have Benjamin Hill, and he's with the Lean Green Foods, and. Uh, they produce uh, this uh, uh, non-meat uh, item called tempeh, I think, and they're going to prepare all kinds of uh, health food for you. So if you're interested in health foods, uh, make sure that you watch us next Thursday evening at 7 to 8.30 p.m. on this very same channel. So this is Jack Fujii saying thank you very much for watching Focus on Agriculture. And we hope that you watch us next Thursday evening, and we hope that you'll have a pleasant evening while we taste this fine cuisine.